In this episode of Ricky Remembers, Ricky remembers Sierra Online PC games. Ricky remembers Sierra Online PC games. You know what? I just realized I don't know why I keep repeating the first line. Why do I, why do I keep saying Ricky remembers Sierra PC Online games? Sierra Online PC games. Anyway, it became a habit. I'm going to try to control it so I won't do it next time. Anyway, Ricky remembers Sierra Online PC games. Now, before we get to the topic for today's Ricky Remembers, or before I get to today's memory of Ricky Remembers, I just want to issue a, a correction for yesterday's episode. I had mentioned that Glicos was at the basement of Robinson's Galleria, which was one of the arcades that my friends and I went to when we were younger. It's actually Circus Circus. It's not Glicos. It's Circus Circus. Glicos is in Makati, in Quad and not in Robinson's Galleria. So again, I repeat that. Uh, the arcade game at the basement of Robinson's Galleria, when you go down the escalator from Reno's, is Circus Circus and not Glicos. So again, Ricky remembers, um, Ricky remembers Sierra Online PC games. So what are these Sierra Online PC games uh, that started in the 80s? They were very, very popular in the 80s. There was King's Quest, there was Space Quest, and then there was Police Quest, and then there was Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards. I'm gonna try to see if I can cover all four of these games, but I'm gonna concentrate or focus more on King's Quest, especially King's Quest 1, Quest for the Crown, because I, that was the very first game, that was the very first role-playing adventure game uh, that I got into so it was like the entryway it was the first game that I ever played the one I really enjoyed and the one that I got that the one that where I got really hooked into these um, PC games from Sierra Online so Sierra Online if you're a fan of that or if you remember this as well uh, most of the most if not all of the Sierra Online PC games were by Ken Williams and Roberta Williams either Roberta Williams wrote it and then Ken Williams programmed it but I remember very fondly King's Quest 1, Quest for the Crown. Um, your, your character was um, Graham. Was, it Gra was the character Graham or was it the king who was Graham? Anyway, you had this character and it was supposed to be like medieval times. But King's Quest is really a combination of all these fairy tales that we, what, that we read as children. There were some elements of... Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel. There was Jack and the Beanstalk. There were some fairies. There, I remember there was a fairy godmother character. There is a wizard. There is a troll. There are dwarves. There are leprechauns. Uh, but yeah, it was mostly fairy tales put together into a. Uh, I don't know how they dealt with the copyright issues with that thing, but I guess it was all public domain by that time. So anyway, it was, a, it was an RPG game or a role-playing game. Or is that considered an RPG game? It was an adventure game. It was the very first of these games where you inhibit a character or you, you play a character and you go around uh, uh, an, an adventure and try to solve it. So in King's Quest 1, um, Graham's, Graham's quest was to find the magic mirror, a magic chest, and there's another one, a magic, and a magic shield. So you had to get a magic chest, a magic mirror, and a magic chest, a magic mirror, and a magic shield. Oh, magic, sh magic chest, magic mirror, magic shield. There you go, I'm so sorry. So three magic items. So the first thing you have to do is talk to the king, right? So the king is the one who gives you the mission and tells you to retrieve these three things in your, in your village. Was it a village? Uh, in, your, in, the, in the king's kingdom, you have to find these three objects uh, because the king was dying and they were a very poor um, kingdom and uh, Graham needed to find these objects to make the kingdom prosperous again. So off you go uh, into this land. Um, this was funny, uh, back in the day, there were, these computer games didn't have those maps so you, had, you knew where you were while you were doing the adventure you had to memorize it in your brain that oh this is where the castle is oh this is where the this is where you can plant the beanstalk this is where you'll find the goat this is where the bridge is where the troll is and this is where 
uh, there, this is where the well is. So you had to figure it out on, all in your brain. Um, I do remember though, back in the day, uh, some of these computer shops like Brochure and Columbia and Brainiac, when you, when you bought these games on diskette, some of them would have guides. Some of them would have like instruction manuals and they would have clues or hints as to how to play the game. We did not have that. Uh, or I didn't avail of that. I didn't buy it because they were just, you know, they would be just photocopied um, manuals of the original game. In fact, I would believe, I would, I, I'm almost certain that those games were pirated or they were just copied. They, they didn't sell us the actual games and we would just copy them from the original uh, discs or the original diskettes. So anyway, I didn't have those manuals or those hint guides or, or anything. So I had to figure everything out on my own. I had to figure out where everything else was. So it was, it was a challenge for my, uh, um, it was a challenge for my nine year old brain. Was I nine years old or 10 years old? There, around nine or 10 years old was when I started playing these games. And it was a challenge for me because I had to piece it together. I had to stitch it together in my brain myself. And then also the, the commands, unlike the games now where there's just icons, right? Where you just click on the icon to say, oh, you got to grab this item or you got to look at it. There were just icons. Back in the day, uh, it was blank. It was just a prompt or it was just a cursor and you were up to your own devices as to how, to, how the syntax should be or what the action word you should put to get your character moving. So if you had to get something, you had to type get, get dagger or get sword or get stone. And then you had to type, look at this or look at blank before you, it'll actually. So you have to guess or you have to figure out how to uh, make your character do something. There were, no, there were no guides as to what you should actually do. There were no icons that you just click on. In fact, there was no mouse. It was just a keyboard. You just, you know, whatever you want the character to do, you just type it in and then you guess. It, it actually served, I, I think it served pretty well later in life when I'm searching for things on Google or YouTube on, and Amazon, where um, I would know how to, to phrase a search term properly to get the results that I want, I found that the initial thing that I, where I learned that from was these Sierra online PC games. So there you go. So you would, you would go around the, the kingdom trying to find these items and all these quests were all uh, elements of some fairy tale that we read before. So as I mentioned, Hansel and Gretel, Hansel and Gretel Jack and the Beanstalk. Um, uh, there were even some biblical, <laughs> there was even something from the Bible because there was something with um, David and Goliath. Because you had to, when you go up the Beanstalk, there was a giant, but you had to use your sling and your pebble uh, to kill the giant. And I think that's where you get the magic chest. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you would also, um, you would also get the magic, I remember you get the magic shield from some leprechauns. And then you get the magic mirror. Uh, you had to go underwater even. And there was a dragon that you had to pull. You had to pour water into the dragon to, to slay him or to let him go so that you can retrieve the magic mirror. Um, so that's King's Quest 1. There was also Space Quest. Uh, if I remember cor correctly, it was the, the Sarian encounter, is it? Uh, but I remember the alien. So Space Quest obviously is a space-themed game like Space like uh, Star Trek or Star Wars, because uh, they were very popular, obviously. Uh, space Quest, you had a character named Roger Wilco, who was a janitor in space. Like he was a janitor in, 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 in a spaceship. Makes you wonder why you would need a janitor there. But you were this bumbling janitor uh, and, and a series of events get, sets you off in an adventure um, where, you, uh, where you save the universe. Uh, that was uh, Space Quest, and the next one was Police Quest, uh, where your character was, um, I remember the character was Sunny Bonds. Sunny Bonds, which is funny, it sounds, uh, very, it sounds very close to one of the characters in Miami Vice. In, anyway, it's Police Quest, and you were trying to pursue the death angel who was like a drug lord or something or a drug somebody who sold drugs um that was police quest and then uh space quest which had roger wilco police quest which had uh sunny bonds and then of course leisure suit larry uh, uh leisure suit larry in the land of the lounge lizards which is funny enough 
that game was very uh, adult themed. It was adult themed. There was sex. There was there were prostitutes, uh, and there were drugs. Um, so I don't know how we were able to get our hands. Uh, I guess there wasn't any rating, or there wasn't any. There weren't any restrictions for for kids to be able to play these games back then. But I remember it being very adult themed. Even Police Quest was was very adult themed. Where hmm, am I supposed to see this in my computer, or am I supposed to do this? But I remember some of these games I played with my dad. My dad was beside me and he saw everything. So I guess it was all right. I guess it was one way for us to learn about these things in the real world. So <laughs> there you have it. I'm, I, I knew there wasn't enough time to discuss all of it, but there's so many more elements uh, to these games. I remember, I even remember that I played these games on an IBM PC and we, we only had a monochrome monitor so I only played it in green I w it was green only later on my dad hooked it up to our Sony Trinitron TV and I was able to see it in Super VGA or in color but the whole time I was playing it in monochrome and then also it took me it, I, I've been playing it for so long before I realized that I could save the game before that I, w I kept dying and in, in King's Quest 1 I kept dying and I would just repeat the whole thing I would I didn't know at some at some that you could actually save it and then you know you'll, you'll you can restore it if you die and just start off where you left I didn't know that for the longest time and I was playing it um, uh, I was playing it like that and also I think this is the most important part I'm so sorry I almost forgot it and we're over time um, I remember that as I was playing these games I would exchange notes with my classmates every recess and every lunchtime we would we would say oh, where where which level are you in what quest were you able to finish how do i got stuck here i got you know i got stumped here how do i do it and all of us would would help each other out and say oh you got to do it this way and we would give each other these tips and that's how we were able to finish the the game or we were able to finish the quests or the adventures uh, i'm gonna give a shout out to those guys who i played with or i exchanged notes with francis mercado uh, when we were in the fifth grade, we would we, I would uh, exchange notes with him during recess and lunch. Francis Mercado, Paolo Ordoveza, if you guys are watching, give a, uh, drop a comment in the comments below. Francis Mercado, Paolo Ordoveza, uh, Dab Dab Javier, or David Alfonso Javier. We would ex we would exchange notes, and also Gino Bagsit. Um, um, yeah, we would all be play. We were. I, maybe a handful of, of students in class who were playing these games and the rest didn't know what we were talking about but we were some of the few we were some of the few uh, kids who were playing it during that time so Francis Mercado, Paulo Ordoveza, Gino Bagsit, Bam Bam Chiazon also uh, Dab Dab Javier or David Alfonso Javier uh, shout out to all of you guys I hope you remember it when we were exchanging uh, hints and tips when we were playing Sierra online PC games. The, the other thing I remember vividly with King's Quest was there was a part there where you had to guess an old man's name and right away you would think Rumpelstiltskin, right? But in fact, the answer was I-F-N-K-O-V-H-G-R-O-G-H-P-R-M which was Rumpelstiltskin if you used a reverse alphabet, meaning A was Z and B was Y. If you if you put Rumpelstiltskin and you use a reverse alphabet, you would come up with I F N K O V H G R O G H P R M. So Ricky remembers I F N K O V H G R O G H P R M. It's crazy how 30 years later, if not even 35 years later, I still remember that. Oh, which another interesting fact was or is Leisure Suit Larry uh, when I was playing this game 35 years ago was in his 40s he was supposed to be this um, this character who was trying to sleep with women right but he was in his 40s his character was supposed to be in his 40s I'm in my 40s now I'm 43 so I'm the same age as Leisure Suit Larry was in the game that I was playing 35 years ago which is just a funny insight uh, so there you have it that's Ricky remembers episode I've this is I uh, this is the longest episode that I've done I think I might not need to do a part two 
um, because there are other PC games that we played before. There was Hard Hat Mac, there was Zaxxon, there was uh, Burger Time, Qbert, and all of that, but they were in the PC game, or they were in, available for the PC and not just for Atari and other video game consoles. So Ricky remembers Sierra Online PC games, Ricky remembers King's Quest, Space Quest, Police Quest, and Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards. I'm right here in front of Best Buy here in Lake Forest. Best Buy, of course, is where uh, we buy our gadgets, our computers, and everything, um, electronics. So I thought I'd use it as a backdrop. I'm here in the Best Buy here in Lake Forest. Um, and yeah, Ricky remembers Sierra Online PC games. If, of course, I wasn't able to mention anything. If you have any thoughts about these games, please drop them in the comments below and let's discuss it in the comments and please like uh like the video share the video and subscribe to the channel by clicking on subscribe below and clicking on the notification bell so that every time there's a new episode from ricky remembers you'll get notified although i do upload or i will try or i try to upload one video or a video once a day or daily but even then i, I post it at different times of the day um, so if you want to know exactly when I upload it, just click on the notification bell below. So subscribe to the channel. This has been Ricky Remembers. Thank you for watching. Watch out for the next video. Thank you.